Cody to help me to get the. Uh, Yeah, one sip. I think everyone will get the alerts on your phones as well, probably. We are live. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Give us a second and we will. Volume's up. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Oh, it did sound like. Give us a second. Is that your phone? Dad, your phone. No, my phone's all the way off. Oh, interesting. Someone's phone is doing it, but that's okay. That's cool. Um, I'm just sharing it to LaSalle Open Mic just now. I, I got cool. the, the Hoot Group. Excellent. Sorry for taking forever, like always. And I just started the watch party. So. Okay, cool. Then we're Booyah. All right, we're ready. Oh, here we go. Cool. Yeah. Woo. All right, Corey, good, let's start it off. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another Dilemma Monday. Welcome and bienvenue. Welcome. Um, so we've got, we've got some, we've got some fun stuff to discuss tonight. We're talking about a very interesting moment in history of music, the history of the world, culture, fashion, we're talking about the uh, two, uh, the rivalry of two groups, the mods and the rockers, and how that kind of sparked the over here the British invasion. So, um, I guess let me get around to let me get around to introducing everybody, um, announcing, moderating tonight. As always, Craig Greenman, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. As always, uh, much enjoyed. Cody, Cody thank you. For- are you enjoying the new the new space? I, I wish everybody could see it, but no, this uh, they set up quite the space here, and I'm sure everybody's going to be seeing more of it in the next few weeks. But this is awesome. Thank you for having me, and it's good to be back. <laughs> so, so this is a first, a first for Dilemma Monday. Not o- not only have we um, expanded past a different time zone, not even not even uh, to not even just a time zone to an, to another country, but even we've gone across the ocean to another continent. Aiden Estelle, a, a true a true to form mod. Thank you for joining us this evening. Yeah, how are you doing? It's two it's two thirty in the morning, so thank you for. I don't know how much coffee you've been drinking or whatnot. Or beer. Honestly, <laughs> not a whole lot. It's uh, it's quite a normal night for me. <laughs> we love to see it. And and. Who is the most frequent guest on the Lem Monday? Monday? Eric Paradine, thank you for joining us. You were on last week, this week. I don't know if that's wow. happened. Before. And and we will see him tomorrow as well yes, at the Sal Market right. uh, right. for a secret uh, secret mission. Secret mission that we are going to hopefully pull off. Super secret that we're announcing it now. Well, we want okay. everybody to know that there's something going on. <laughs> that's right. We want want people to stay tuned. Stay tuned to the big event that uh, Eric has been teasing people with. He's, he keeps showing the pictures of LaSalle Market and crazy rumors were flying and oh we gosh, had to put right? them to rest. <laughs> really, really. No, it's still there. And Eileen is still there. Still the Scott's owner. Still there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's no, some good stuff. So anyway, Corey, you you uh, you came up with this idea about the mods and the rockers. And so, yeah, um, I think the, the, the first place to start, Aiden, I guess I'm going to start with you. Can you give us what the best definition of a mod is? To be honest, it's so broad and there's so many like different definitions. Like you ask one mod what it is to be mod, he'll give you something completely different to what other people want. What's your version Um, of mod? Well, for me, it would just be anyone who dresses in, I don't want to say fancy clothes because it's not like this shit was cheap. (laughs) You know what I mean? But nice looking clothes, you know? Um, Where's a Parker? Listening to a certain style of music. We're talking like the Who, the Kinks, um, Small yes. Faces, that sort of stuff. Um, then there's a whole revival period as well, and that brings in people like the Jam. Um, All on my list, by the way, that I was going to bring up. I have, as Cody knows, I like my lists. I have my lists of from one to to actually forty five of the greatest mod bands of all time really? so uh we, we we'll do maybe one through 20. <laughs> yeah go on, man. was the brain on there the brain is on there that's, what, that's my favorite mod band. uh the, the brain is on there they, they, there's some there's as usual i i question the order you know and maybe some of these and, and they should specify better maybe they're not necessarily like well as 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 aiden said you know there's ska bands within the mod 
there's a lot of blues bands really more than rock. Yeah, there is there is also um if you look in a sort of later period there's actually a lot of punk bands that a lot yes. of people might think were influences as, as well. the 80s as the 80s started rolling around the punk mm. uh, the punk scene mods came to play um and it was a different punk scene than, than we had in the united states at that point just because yeah. they dress better <laughs> But um, yeah, so so Corey, do you want do you want to start off with the summer of '64, or where where do you want to go with it, or you want to go in the '50s where the where the rockers? Oh yeah, and the the, the Teddy Boys. Which so, is a fo- which is, so you know, can I just say an interesting fact about Teddy Boys first? Yeah. Yes, or someone who was one. Uh, you know, Roger Daltrey of the Who. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, he was actually a Teddy Boy to start off with. So the, he so wasn't the, a mod to begin with. Wow. So, and to be honest, another on top of that, that none of the Who actually, except for, I think it was Pete Townsend, none of them actually said they were mods. That them <laughs> being mods was mostly a marketing campaign. Aha. Uh-huh. It worked, and the music still, like, it was mod music, but they weren't actually mods themselves, if you see what I mean. Did you ever hear yeah, the thing yeah. about Keith Moon? So he was like a huge like Beach Boy fan, and the day they met him, his hair was like he tried dyeing it blonde, but it was like bright orange because he like bleached it with like hydrogen <laughs> peroxide or something to look like Dennis Wilson. You know, what? I didn't know that. That's very interesting. Yeah, there, there's a story. I guess they ha- they had a drummer or something. He's like, I bet you I could play better, and I guess everyone found out he was right <laughs> while looking yeah. like looking like a schmuck in in like Hawaiian stuff. Oh, Eric, Eric Wells, thank you for joining us. We, we got to get you on this show, dude. I, like, I know Eric. But, um, you know, I was going to say, I, I read some interesting things about the last uh, album, Who Are You, uh, with uh, Keith Moon. And prior to like three to four months of his, before his... Uh, very, yeah, he died. Yeah, well, right. He, <laughs> he, uh, his drumming wasn't very good on that album. In fact, it was coming to the point that they were going to replace him. Oh, really? um, but in the actual end of the album, he, they got him sober enough and he was taking, which eventually well, killed the, him. The irony, yeah. The irony was he was taking the meds to, to, to help to, him with the alcohol. Help him with the alcohol. And, and he was taking a lot of the, you know, thinners, you know, trying to make himself skinny. He was taking pills, pot oh, pills wow. to make himself skinny. <laughs> And, and really, that's how he died. Um, and it was ironic, you know, when he tried to make himself better that he died. Um, wow. But yeah, that, that last album um, w- was interesting because they were very much close to Stephen Adlering. Um, you know, yeah. out. <laughs> out. You're out of here. For the, he he died you know the, weekend, the weekend of the premiere for Live and Let Die. He went to the party, and that's why he was taking the amount of pills he was taking for the. Well, he had a pot belly. He was trying to. He was literally trying to hide his stomach. Yeah. Um. And he remember he was only thirty two years old. I mean, he was not an old man. He was he was extremely young, and you know, but his body was probably that of an eighty year old. And um, so, uh, but it, so, do you want to start and go and kind of down the list of, of these? You know, I think Aiden led it off pretty good with with the with the well, who think- as. as I think the one thing I'd like to jump in with is that if you take a look at uh, take a look at your favorite band and uh, oh how can I do this wait I, I didn't get it the Beatles well, you have the rockers and, there uh, yeah <laughs> this, this is the Beatles and I'm trying to get that um, Hamburg the Hamburg Silver leather. Beatles or the Beatles the Beatles well maybe the Silver Beatles but um, let me well Corey add. brought out a pretty interesting fact to me today when we were talking about it was really that. John and George were more rockers. They were not mods. And Paul they, and Ringo, really. I don't think the Beatles ever were, though. A lot of people confuse this because they, they wore suits as such, but they never really tried to be mods or fit in with the particular mod subculture. They were definitely British Invasion, um, right. but they're one of the few bands of the British Invasion that weren't really appealing to the mods at that time. They capitalized on it. They, they, capitalized, they, capitalized, on it. On it. they capitalized on the look, more importantly, briefly. Yeah. though. and there's and that's there one of the things go, that I think yeah. set them apart from a lot of the other bands. Is it wasn't um, it wasn't sort of their image. And yeah, it definitely wasn't their permanent image. Yeah, they kind of had the rocker image, but they marketed the the, the mod look, and and obviously well, it, it worked pretty well for them. Oh, definitely worked out well. Yeah, they definitely got to a big audience there. Absolutely, but, um, when they found what was really successful. Yeah. By the way, I have I have one list today that will, will be the most controversial list that we wait for the end on supposedly the most popular English band of all time. And I will sentence this out. It was not the Beatles. The Stones, right? No. Mm-hmm. Zeppelin? No. Dave Clark Five. No. Kinks. Well, 
We'll leave this to the end. Let's oh, let's God. have the suspense, but you have all guessed wrong, just so you know. The Yardbirds. Um, I'm, I'm going to table this, but you're wrong as well. <laughs> um, just an interesting thing again about the uh, the Who's album. Who are you? It's uh, you, you remember that thing in the Beatles where they said that Paul McCartney died because he he was like looking yes. different yeah. in the cover or something. But it's the same on, on the same on Who Are You because um, Keith Moon is the only one sat down. He sat down in the chair on the stage and he's the only one out of the four of them sat down and then he That's died right. so they thought it was another similar conspiracy and doesn't it, there's something on the on the chair there, there's something written on the chair yeah too, yeah like, i think it says oh. do not take away yes yes yeah i actually read about that today when i was trying to do some homework and i was like look at all this stuff you know so you know if, if people are thinking that conspiracy ser- th- theories were are, are a brand new thing in in television and it, it's not oh no no <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, wow. the 50s and 60s had quite quite on and i'm sure it always was to, well, to there was that. there was a hot moment all the you know, internet's done has helped to put them together there was a hot moment <laughs> when when in when the album came out, Sgt. Pepper's came out, and we were all playing the records backwards on the phonograph. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and listening to everything. And, you know, you could buy into it because it sounded close enough, like I buried Paul and all of that stuff, all the clues. And it was just for like a weekend, a week, it was like, whoa, did this really happen? Yeah. We were all running, they, around, they, they... running around campus thinking, my God. <laughs> Well, the rumor still is that the Paul that's today is not the real Paul. That, Paul? That, 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 mm-hmm. you know, you know, died like and this is a replacement. <laughs> so, um, a name <laughs> you know, I, I feel kind of silly because I, I when you talk about one of the bands, British bands that still played as much today as they were back when they first started. Uh, greatest hits of all time. Great guitar player. Great singer. I'm thinking I know who it might be, but I'm not going to say my guess. You're gonna you're gonna leave my my, my Yes, I'm gonna <laughs> leave it alone. Please, please leave because I I I want to cause a controversy because it, it's a band. It, it is definitely a band, and yeah. and but let's leave it a go because eventually someone's gonna guess it because you guys can't be that lame. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's um, right. But, but anyway, you know yeah. So. Queen? <sighs> yes. Oh. <laughs> but we'll go back to it please let's let's so you know what i wanted to i want to move on to the small faces yes oh, one of my favorite bands yes uh, yes yes fantastic band um and again here here's a band that really was a blues band um it, it you know and and i was thinking about a band an american band that's kind of similar to them in style at least at the time um I was thinking Genesis had a lot of small They're faces. Genesis, they were not Genesis. I meant Jake Giles. Jake, oh. Jake, Giles. Well, yeah. I apologize. I yeah, meant, I meant the Jake Giles. The small faces and Jay Giles have a real similar sound. I can, because I thought Steve Marriott, you know, his his singing and his um, harmonica playing. No, he wasn't bad. No, certainly not a bad harp. Oh my God, his guitar playing was just yeah. No, I mean he was he was brutal, a f- phenomenally gifted. And and I, I think people never give the Small Faces the at least in the United States uh, it, it's it's the most underrated band ever. It's, it's not over here. It is as well actually. Um, the yeah. amount of people like obviously everyone knows Itchy Who Park when you put it on. You know, you play it for them. They're like, ah, yeah, I've heard that one before. Yeah. Everyone knows it. But if I if I said to someone, oh, you know, you, have you heard the small faces you heard this song whatever they'd be like i don't know who they are and they're such to me they're such a big part of our musical history and it seems strange that so many people really don't have a clue it's the same with the kinks actually like everyone knows all day and all of the night nobody knows um i don't know rocket man probably the most the most probably one of the great mod uh, anthems i'm dedicated followers of fashion oh it's a beautiful tune that's uh carnaby street mentioned that song where i got this jacket What's it? Water, no, sh- water on the sunset. What's the, the Waterloo sunset? Water, water, Waterloo water. sunset. Yeah, it's lovely. That's a pretty good song. My mother's favorite King song. Um, 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 Celluloid Heroes. That is her absolute. Celluloid, absolute, yeah. absolute no. favorite. But let's not get out of order. <laughs> let's not. Sorry, they, sorry. They, 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 they are on this list and they are coming up very, very quickly. But, um, but if we want to say, so, do you want to say anything about the faces too? Because oh yeah, yeah. They, I didn't have much time for the faces personally. Really? I like Rod Stewart on his own, and I love the small faces, but I just, I didn't like, I like some of their music, but I'm not a, as massive a fan. So, I'll say Rob, that. The Rob small faces were almost like just a jumping off point for 
Rod Stewart is like Ted and Ron Wood though. I mean, well, also and Steve and Steve Marriott because he went on to form Humble Pie with Peter Frampton, which yeah. is also true. Yes. Yeah. Um, but um, you know, one of so, one of my favorite songs, and I know Cody likes when Corey plays "Ooh La La." Yeah. No, yeah, I love that song. I mean, but I mean you know, that's definitely young. one of the early, that's one of the earlier tracks, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was really yeah. uh, formative. Like the Yardbirds, where so many people went on to do so much, so many great. Oh, songs. I have that list of the Yardbirds. You yeah. know, the three greatest, three greatest guitar players maybe that ever stepped yeah, foot yeah. on the earth, all in the same band. There are the faces. Awesome. Look at the faces with the jackets yeah. they're wearing behind me. Yeah. yeah. yeah there you go. And that's actually. Actually. There's a solid point because think of all the bands that are connected in some way to either the faces or the small faces. Mm, that's, that's true. Hubble Pike, there you go. Frampton and um. Oh. It, and then if you go, See, I was thinking everything kind of relates back to other, Eric Clapton at some point. Well, because <laughs> yeah, because of the Jeff Beck group when he left the <laughs> and who yeah. and Jeff Beck replaced Eric Clapton. The yo yo, throw me okay. Two random people in this chat in this thing. Throw me two ran random like classic rock stars. I will give you the six degrees. I can do this. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um, Steven Tyler and um, or have someone else give another one. Robert Fripp. Okay, Robert Fripp and Steven Tyler. Let's. Do this. Let's oh, do let's this. Do it. <laughs> okay, I can do it, and I can even I can even use some moddage in here. Or, okay, so oh, Stephen Tyler to Robert Fripp. Stephen Tyler once served as a roadie for very early Led Zeppelin. Okay. Led Ze Led Zeppelin featuring Jimmy Page, who was in the Yardbirds. <laughs> well, you did with with <laughs> with Jeff Beck. As well, as well as um, Ron Wood, who is in the Rolling Stones, who King Crimson opened for at Hyde Park in 1969 <laughs> for the Brian Jones Memorial Concert. That's six degrees there of separation. You. There you go. Um, that, that was that was very impressive. Um, you're a nerd. Um, <laughs> you're certainly not a rocker, that's for sure. <laughs> with that, with that. All right, let's let's move on to to a group that I, I actually had to. Um, we should go back at some point to talk about the the, the fights in Brighton and who the rock. Well, are. I, th I think we'll get there. Okay, we'll we'll cool. definitely get there. I mean, yeah, um, when we get to the who. Well, the who was number one. We kind of if we jump back, but but I I definitely wanted to go over the next group because the jam. Yes. The yes. Jam. Um. um I'll tell you something, yeah, Paul Weller is one of my favorite vocalists ever. He's got such a different sound to him. I don't know how to describe it. It's very, very unique. Very hard to copy. Yeah, no, I mean, um You could you could tell he liked Steve Marriott too. He looks like him a bit. Oh, well, is it, which is if the you've seen the interview one. of him talking about his biggest musical influences. Is it hit? Uh, yeah, it's Steve Marriott and the small faces, yeah, yeah. He, um, he talks like about him quite a lot because his mother was a massive fan of them, apparently. Makes and sense. he actually really not. He used to live um, in Woking on what's the name of the street? He did an album on it. It's a street near the train station, anyway, and that's right next to where my nan lives now. There you go. Yeah, six uh, steps of separation on, on that one. That. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, everybody, so, everybody tonight's going to find six degrees of separation or something. <laughs> so, Corey, what, what's your feeling about the um, town called Malice? Okay, so I had that playing earlier today, and what's what's really cool about it, for that song, when it came out, it felt like a song that was older than it was while still being as edgy as it was. Very relatable, was even today. Like, I could have seen, if the, King, if the Kinks took a few more downers, <laughs> they could have wrote a yeah. town called Malice. It's sort of like Dead End Street, but even worse. Yes. You know well, what I mean? My only criticism of the jam... Um, was a lot of their songs sounded very similar. Um, yeah. Right? It, 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 they had it a sound? certain style and it just, they kind of they stayed. Had, they definitely had a sound. Yeah. yeah. They and had it, a sound and people liked it. Well, and I, and I get that, but, but there's only so long I can listen to the exact same song over and over again, even if it's great the first two times. You know, if I have to sit there for two hours in a concert, it sounds the same. So, yeah. Um, but that, that, that's my criticism. The that's American the difference band. between The Who and The Small Faces so far and, and Jam. The also, Who, the, no, the time, you know. Time, time period wise, like the Jam were like the like second wave of like the, the reborn, you know. Yeah, they, 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 they were the um, Quadrophenia rebirth. Yes. Yeah. Essentially. So, can I ask a question? This might be stupid, but if, would you consider the early police to have any, any relation to the mods? Um, mm. 
Kind of. Not really. What are you talking about? Uh, Gordon You're Summers in Quadrophenia. Because honestly, he was the most inaccurate character on that entire film. Oh, Most yeah. of it, they got quite right. And yeah. then they had him there in this giant leather trench coat he turned up on like this bright silver vest. Was that Billy Idol? No, Sting. Was that Sting? No, Sting. No, Sting. That, was, that was Sting that wasn't Billy Idol? Yeah. No, no, it was Sting. Yeah, yeah, it was Gordon Summers, yeah. Okay. As, the, as the bellhop. Yes. Mm. Bellboy. Yep, yep. Bellboy. So, the bellboy uh, bellboy. Races, yeah. because we only have an hour and a half show. But wait, so yeah, what do we, you know, the mods and the rockers, what did that represent yes, yeah, cult- the- culturally? What was going on that created I mean, this conflict between the mods and the rockers? And I guess let's move it back. It was- let's go to Brighton. Let's, 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 let's take that on if you, if you want to yeah. move there. I think so. Um, the, the way it was reported was it was, it was boredom. It was a lot of views. You know, it was just after the... Uh, Boy. Just after the baby boom, right. and people had lots of money to spend, lots of things to do, and they were bored in the holiday places. So they go down to Brighton for a weekend, have a good time there, and then they bump into other groups of youths. And these people were different. So there's a little bit of sorry. The, the, the equi- uh, I'm just for 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 the American audience. The the hol- these hol- think somewhere like like Atlantic City. Brighton is kind of like an Atlantic well, seaside 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 high like yeah, seaside seaside seaside. Seaside. yeah that kind of that kind of sort of thing. Yeah, so, Think Jersey so they'd go down there, yeah. bump into other groups. There'd be small conflicts that broke out, and so, like in 1963, there was nothing really reported on the news, but there was like small conflicts between the groups. And in 1964, people had heard about it the year before, so they went down there for the fights, and then obviously that's when it all got reported on. Right, and, and obviously the, the movie Quadrophenia is you know Jimmy um trying to find himself and 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 modding out and and, and the and scooters doing. i think that's something the, the scooters are, i think that's something that needs to get discussed is, 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 yeah what, very important part. right so so the mods the mods were kind of what were they were imitating u.s greasers, greasers? not as such no no the rockers the rockers, rockers were yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say the rockers. I mean, the rockers. I'm American. sorry. Yeah, the, the yeah. Because your pro, yeah, your picture is of the rockers. I mean, it looks there, like American yeah. graffiti and fun. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's, so, uh, it's, all bit, it's all sort of like rockabilly, that sort of stuff. That was the kind of music they listened to. Um, Flatbush. The Alley Cats. So they would listen to Great rockabilly. Cat, yeah. Okay, these guys were. I'm, I'm not. I might not be 100 percent right about that, yeah, but yeah, I think that's yeah. definitely one of the ones I listen. Well, to. The, the rockers were based off of the 50s and Elvis Presley. I mean, that's, well, that's yeah, where Presley, it's, yeah, a lot of Presley as well. Yeah. So the rockers, that whole rocker style would be a style that, that couldn't be sustainable because, because there's nowhere it can go. It's no, it's very, it's very, yeah, yeah, static. yeah. There's not a whole lot you can do with it. I mean, the mod style changed. There's, there's a whole lot of mod styles. Obviously, you got your boat in blazer and thing, but you can just have like a normal jacket, double-breasted, you know, polo shirt. The Fred Perry is a very integral part of mod culture. So um, there's, there's, there's this kind of uh, feeling that around the 60s and so forth, you know, that's when young men growing up didn't have that whole alpha kind of be a man. It was, started, it was, it's almost. They started to chip away. To it because obviously the rockers came a lot before, and then it, it started all off with the teddy boys. You know, they had the nice European fashion, that sort of stuff. Yeah. And the rockers had their form of transport, and so the mods wanted a form of transport, but they wanted something flashy and European. And the look at this, the scooter straight from Italy. You know, well, it's really cool when you see some of those old pictures and you're like, I want one of the scooters, dude. That's it's like, ten, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. 10 mirrors now, on either side. Now, how does this with with like, say, the soccer hooligans? How does that? So they, they came a little bit later. Um, okay. they're, they're more around the sort of, um, the, the, I could say later, the, they still are in the period of the mods. I mean, my dad was a mod up in um, Newcastle, excuse me. <clears throat> and um, he got sort of ambushed by a bunch of punks but also football hooligans like they're they're, they're, they're a group that hung out together um, and he was a mod. <laughs> yeah pretty much um and he got attacked in a shopping mall by being whipped by canes by them and that sort of stuff wow. um so there was a definite conflict going on like all across the uk with people like the football hooligans as well but they were willing to fight with anyone who was that was more a, a regional thing. Did you know? something, anyone who wasn't there. something like uh, Clockwork Orange, you know, what was that all? Oh, that Jesus. Yeah, that's a, that's a messy film. That was such a messed up movie. <laughs> but, I mean, does that have some sort of relation to this, like, pent-up aggression? I mean, what was going on where... I where... mean, maybe it was Kubrick, wasn't it? So, yeah. who knows what was going on there? So, listen, uh, Cody has... Uh, Mushrooms. Corey, 
Cody, well, Cody has a question here. So I was just wondering, Aiden, could you be a, a mod and a supporter of a football club? Like, is it like a territorial yeah. thing? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Because it's not like, but like, I am supporter of Newcastle, Newcastle United. I'm from Queens Park, so he's gonna kill right, me. <laughs> so, I'm like six six, so I don't know. <laughs> at least it's not Liverpool, man. Queens Park were the lovable losers. The Queens Park's the Buffalo Bills of the Premier League. <laughs> the Premier League. <laughs> they haven't been in the Premiership for, for know, a while, now, as long as if I remember rightly, but. All right. Well, I, well, I, think I mean, it's not like football hooligism wasn't necessarily just football supporters. It was, um, it was people. Yeah, it was again that anger, but sort of brought out as a culture. It was terrible. Yeah. You know, angry, angry. Yeah, very territorial. Yep. You know, right. angry, angry people um, who were literally fighting for their football club. And I love Newcastle United, but <laughs> I don't think I'd just go out in the street and start fighting people over it. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not that big of a deal. Not good for business. No. But let's let's move on to the Kinks because I, I think, yes. Uh, you really got me now. So, so ob- <laughs> ob- not, uh, ob- not, uh, obnoxious and loud and my favorite story about the Kinks. I remember being told this by the fifth grade mu- or the the yeah the fifth sixth grade music teacher, um, Mr. Sauerbrunn, about how the Mr. Kinks. Sauerbrunn. Oh man, that man. So <laughs> the name. Kinks- it's a hell of a name. It's it's the, it's, a it's, a German, name, German. it's a German name, Sauerbrunn. He just sounds like a food, but But go ahead. Good guy, awesome guy. And uh, so I remember him telling us about how the Kinks used to go to other people's gigs and they would cut everybody's amps, like the cords, (laughs) to their amps. Really? Before they'd start going, because they wanted more people to show. And they figured if they could, like, if they could, if they cut the cords to everybody else's amps and they were the only show left in town. Everyone would go to their show. Um, you know, that was my next marketing ploy for the dilemma. Wow. I thought we could possibly do that. Oh, don't give it away, though. No, no. Yeah, no, my, my <laughs> lord. Now, now, if it, God forbid anyone's stuff goes wrong now, we're going to get it's, blamed. It's all for in the it, dilemma. But... Corey did it. <laughs> wow. Not, we're just um, blaming our, everything is on Bruce. It's all Bruce's fault. Bruce. <laughs> Similar story, something Kevin I heard Bruce. about. And I'm not sure if this is a rumor, if it's true or not, but Ray, De- oh, who was, was the guitarist Dave or Ray? I forget. Dave. Well, Dave, Dave, Dave Davies was the guitarist. Dave was the guitarist, yeah. yeah. So I heard he was sort of the inventor of fuzz because he slashed his amps. He slashed, he slashed the front of his amps. amps. Yeah. yeah. Fuzzy sounds. That's the story. That, his, his, that is, yeah, that's the story. I don't know how true that is. But. It kind of happened by accident, and then he said, oh, keep it. All right. Isn't that great when stuff works out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, the, the, the kinks. When, you know, I started doing a lot more research today, you know, I knew a little bit, but, but this was, I think the Kings were, my, were, were my favorite of, of the mods. Um, just, I'm not yeah. going to disagree. They, they, they were, they were I fun think, and, and, and they get, you know. Would you say the Kinks and the Who would be the two bands coming out of the mods that were most Definitely like, not. No, no, no. I no, think, like mainstream cultural crossover. Oh, mainstream ones. Yeah. 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 No, that's yeah. right. I'm with it. Yeah. Yeah, now, now, I mean, my, my personal two favorites, we've already been mentioned, it would be the Kinks and the Small Faces. Yeah. Um, I, I yeah. love the Small Faces, but I love Jay Giles' band, and, and I and I started listening, I was like, you, you know, it's, have it's, a, I, now it, that you're saying it, I can see kind of where you're going with yeah, that. Yeah, no, it had a, a very similar sound. Um, but, but, all right, here's here's the... The next group we've brought up already, let's, let's talk about the Yardbirds, let's talk about the three possibly greatest guitar players in the history of the world all in a band but not really together well no, no um well two two of them had a moment together right but, but so Je- jeff beck and, and um, jimmy page yes. briefly had a moment and foolishly enough jimmy page for a brief moment was the bass player of the yardbirds because yeah. they just wanted to make sure that he was around because jeff beck was starting to get into hallucinogenic drugs and as we learned with stand for a while <laughs> yeah as we learned from the fleetwood uh-huh. mac episode hallucinogenic yeah, drugs <laughs> and um si- and um guitarist singers in the 60s did not end very really well. good mix really good so, mix. really good mix <laughs> i just um, want to pretend i'm taller than you <laughs> yeah no so um yeah no, wait where the hell was i i i, I don't know you, you lost connecticut oh thank you we're talking about how these guitar so, players crossed paths Oh yeah, oh yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeff Beck was getting into his hallucinogens, and um, to a weird degree, thank God he did because the records he put out with the Jeff Beck group were spectacular. Um, what do you think of the? the so you know, my my favorite, um, "Heartful of Soul." I thought 
was was the best song that they had. I, I don't know what anybody else on on that one, but that, that's sick and hard and lonely. Well, for me, for me, it was over under sideways down. Okay. And, and I thought that uh, you know Paige doing his work on there and those that that kind of. So so you thought the best era. Or it's not that it was a very long era, but you 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 like the Jimmy Page years or year or uh, you know because Page is so inventive as a guitar player. I mean, he's just he just kicks ass. But on the other hand, when the Yardbirds, what really caught my attention with the Yardbirds was "I'm a Man." Oh yeah, and and that was like, oh, what's that? I, I, that was really rough and raw. The same way. Um, you really got me. It was the same thing with the Kinks. Kinks. I mean, it wasn't polished. It was in your face, and it really struck something with me. I mean, I related. I just, uh, wow, this is great stuff. Uh oh, Corey, did you unplug? And, uh, I just want to make sure we didn't unplug anything like last oh, week. Okay, but. yeah. <laughs> so I'm a man, you know, and and uh, and that whole that whole uh, usurping the the American blues idiom bringing it over to England and then us as American kids find out about American blues through the British artists. Yeah. How, how ironically crazy is that? Right? I mean, yeah. does that make, oh. and meanwhile, <laughs> and meanwhile, while they're doing this, while they're giving us this African American iconic music, that's so important. You know, they're dressed up as mods. Yeah, no, it, 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 it was, it was back in a minute. Okay. You know? Yeah, I know that that was that was really interesting. Eric, it, I, I have a question for you. Yeah. What was the first song that shocked you? First song that shocked me. Yeah, like to your recollection, what was the first song that song that ever like just like shocked you? Well, the first song, one of the one of the first songs, because you know, I think was when the Who did out in the street. Uh, okay. And it was just like, that? you know, again, it was kind of that the what? The three best guitar players all in one band. Oh, remember when we were trying to add the Delano? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I get it. You know, when Townsend turned up the guitar really loud or they placed the microphone really close to the amp where he could hear him switching the tone switch back and forth and towards the end of the... Uh, and, and that just one piece where you hear the clicking. Bah, 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 uh, that that struck even more than the first time I heard Satisfaction when the Stones played it on, on Ed Sullivan. And you can hear uh, Brian Jones clicking. The, I think it was Jones. Was it Jones or Richard? Yeah. Who was yeah, no, Brian Jones. Yeah. Yeah. And you could, um, hear him, you could hear him click, you know, that loud switch. And you hear him turn the fuzz on. Now, this, go ahead, Cordy. Oh, I was going to say, did you ever hear Otis Redding's version of Satisfaction? Oh, yeah. Boom. At Boom. least Boom. triple time Boom. from the Stones, Boom. especially when he does it live. It is insanely fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it. Love it. Song. Actually, Love it. I, I wanted to, to, to bring up, you know, some of the... Um, did you know that John Coltrane was considered a mod? Well, the mods, the mods were into rhythm and blues and jazz, and that's where they started. That was the originator in 1957, that, it, well, yeah, uh, the, the R, mod. Well, yeah, it was R&B R and jazz and that, and it was those guys starting off, and then all of a sudden, those guys want, the guys listening to that wanted to start making music, and they were really, I mean, really punky to a degree. And so you have the influence of wanting to be John Coltrane, wanting to be Jackie Wilson, wanting to be Otis Redding. Yeah. <laughs> while, but I think there was something else going on with the rockers. I think the rockers were kind of part of the the subculture that felt disenfranchised from everything else that was going around them. You know, they weren't part of it. They were isolated from it. Whereas the mods were kind of like, yeah, give me more, give me more, give me more. They were really into what's happening. Well, that was the whole, uh, the, you know, the, like the Kennedys with, with, with Camelot, right? Because yeah. Jackie Kennedy was all, you know, that she dressed in a, um, oh, oh, you know, just in a different way, in a regal way. And, and I think the world in, in that mid 60 era was was trying to have Camelot everywhere. And, and yeah. I think the mod uh, w was was England's version of it, obviously. And well, the swing and, in 60s. The swing and Yeah. But you think about the Kennedy era in, in itself, what well, was yeah. going on in the United States, too. Well, well, yeah, and, and they weren't so much. I mean, they were creating their own thing, and they. I, and I feel like the rockers were kind of uh, were kind of pulling away and isolating, yeah. and becoming more and more disenfranchised. And the rockers were just saying, "Hey, give me more. I have an appetite. You know, I want to do this. I want to do that. I'm going to rule the world and all that stuff." Yeah, I mean, I think of that movie like Lords of Flatbush with the rockers. You know, what the you know they're all wearing the the, the leather yeah. jackets and they're yeah. totally disenfranchised and. 
Anytime you can bring up the Lords of Flatbush on the show, you're going to bring up. There's, there's, the no, there's no doubt because they were the coolest people. <laughs> and and you look at it. I mean, when you think of of all the bands that well, the Beatles, the Beatles went through a rocker phase for what, about a hot minute yeah. while they were in Berlin. And then sure. you know, that, was, that was it didn't work. It wasn't sustainable. So, you know what, I, I want to go to a band that, that I really didn't know a lot about. It was one of the revival mod bands, um, Secret Affair. Oh, don't even know them. Wow. So, believe it or not, they're rated, in, and it's a shame Aiden's not on right now, they're rated the number six mod band of all time. From what list? Um, who, who, oh, who are we? in town and country. Yes. It's actually... It's returned. It, okay, well, good, because we need Aiden on this one. <laughs> Aiden, it's are you actually... familiar with Secret Affair? Secret Affair, yeah, yeah, I quite like the Secret Affair. Ah, uh, dude. Uh, they, um, that's the yeah, real I went to see Boost Foxton in From the Jam, which is uh, yep. the jam, basically, next step. <laughs> what they well, turn well, into. The, the and the Secret Affair supported them. So the people I'm going to mention, the, the Secret Affair, and, and the next person I was going to mention is Paul Weller. Um, you know, well, you, hey, you know, Are so, you inside? Um, no, <laughs> but um, so the the I think Secret Affairs' uh, biggest song was "My World," um, which, which I listened yeah. to uh, a few times today, just to you know get a get a feel for it. I, I liked it. I thought, I thought it was the, I've seen quite a few people um, talk about the Secret Affair, but honestly, the first time I heard them was when they played at that gig. Okay, uh, so I don't really know too much from them. I don't even know the names of their songs. I remember what they played at that gig was quite good. I quite enjoyed it. But. Yeah, no, you know, the nice thing about doing the show and 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 learning about different um, genres and bands and and history, I, I got to you know literally listen to about forty bands today, and and you know thirty five of them I knew, but the five yeah. that I'd never heard before, I, I heard some music that I I really you know enjoyed, um, but but I do want to go to Paul Weller because um, <laughs> listed as one of the greatest vocalists of all time. Um, okay. Was was in multiple mod bands, yep. and uh, you know, re really, um, I, I think his most popular what single is a Wildwood, um, which which is a different sounding song. Also, he's um, in, in his late years. He's very much moved into a sort of acoustic guitar playing. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if that's quite stylized as some sort of acoustic rock, I'd say. Um, but he actually he played live in in my city just last year. Oh. He played. We have a big festival called Victoria's Festival, and he played there. Yeah, so uh, I saw a bunch of different versions of Wildwood, and it looked like he was playing an ovation. I couldn't tell, which I also no. thought was kind of funny that he was playing an ovation in in England. But but hey, all good. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Cat Stevens played an ovation. Yeah, yeah no, he did. You're right, right. Yeah, Cat Stevens was kind of modish at a mo for a moment. Yeah, there was there was definitely some. More sounding tunes out of him, yeah. So, do you think the jam would consider themselves to be mod or punk or both? Uh, definitely mod. mod. Well, says, that's how they marketed themselves, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure what they consider themselves, but um, Paul Weller, um, quite famously and quite controversially, goes by the title the King of Mod, yes. Uh, there you go. Yes, he does. Howard Stern saying the king yeah. of all media. The king of all media. Well, Howard Stern is the king of all media. Well, well, but, 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 but Paul, well, because he was in two of the two, two, three specific bands, uh, plus himself, that Not only that, all been in the top ten of the. He was the, the figurehead. He was the figurehead of the quadrophenia and the revival. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. He, he he was sort of the person um, that all the revivalists after 1979. Um, sort of you know looked up to they, they were trying to you know imitate him they wanted to be him he shopped on carnaby street you know he rode a scooter yeah he had a nice clothes he, he an entire brand of shoe was not not brand a style of shoe was named after him i've actually got some the world, jam. really yeah wow yeah, it's interesting sure. because he, he to me is and, and this is probably a, a weird analogy He's got, he gets credit for having this great voice, but I, I don't feel he has a great voice. I think he's like a Bruce Springsteen where no, it, no, it, I agree. I it's a voice that kind of fits, but it's not a great, great voice. voice. But it's a very different voice. It's a very unique voice. Like that's, that's, yeah, Bob Dylan or, or Bruce Springsteen kind of where, you know, that neither one of them would certainly be called great vocalists, but, but you know, no. their, their songs are, are, are tremendous. So, I, I have a, uh, go I, ahead. So, Aiden, I have, I have a question as far as, um, so... 
the mod, so I know the mods have different factions, but uh, uh, for uh, more gen, more generally, aren't the northern the northern soul guys? Aren't those guys more kind of like uh, uh, more ska based? And then the so, more south you go, it's getting more rocky, more punky. Like, well, the, the northern soul movement, although it was heavily related to mods, wasn't so much mods in itself. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of. Uh, there was there was a lot of original mods that celebrated it, but it wasn't necessarily northern. It was called Northern Soul, not because it was the north part of England, but because it came from Northern America, obviously. Um, I think it originated in it's a massive record company there. Oh, hang on, I've forgotten the name of it, but it originated somewhere in America, North America. Um, Atlantic, you know, wait, wasn't... Atlantic or Columbia or yeah, yeah, it was one of them. I think. Yeah. Um, the, the big Motown, that's it, wherever they were Motown. from. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's an interesting... Uh... Well, yeah, we're, uh... yeah, so Northern Soul itself wasn't actually a division between sort of Northern and Southern mods in the UK. And yeah. um, the, the music okay. was sort of a divider in itself because it wasn't obviously the same as the, the, the rock mod music that came along from all those other bands. You know, you listen to something like The, the Snake by Al Wilson, and it, even though it has its similarities, it's definitely very different from something by The Small Faces, for example. But so, it, Northern versus Southern, isn't it more like cities like Liverpool or for the Beatles? Yeah, that's the thing. That, that just came up with um, a divide in, in basically politics. Uh, it was the way the government treated the North versus the way they treated the South. I mean, we had all our mines closed down in the North. Yeah. Uh, that sort of thing. We, we lost so, a lot of, we weren't treated very fairly. So what were the cities that were so like I of course the Beatles and Liverpool so actually the, the biggest one for Northern Soul was Wigan, um, which isn't that far north at all. It's sort of yeah. in the Midlands, uh, yeah. but Wigan Casino was a very famous sort of hot spot for it. It, it, it famously had very bouncy dance floors. So <laughs> well, you know, you, you think of when you think of cities. I mean, you only think of like the Liverpool sound. <laughs> You have like you have like black or like Blackpool too, and then uh, Manchester. They've got Blackpool lights. Cody, well, put in putting your question before. Oh, I was going to say, Aiden, <laughs> what what year did that Northern Soul kind of kind of come into play over there? To be honest, it was actually quite a while before. It was, it was um, I believe late fifties, early sixties, but very early sixties. Um, so it was before the whole sort of like mods got into the news and that sort of thing. It's very know, early. Because if you look, there's a lot of big like Sam Cook. Otis Redding, a lot of them have tr Jackie Wilson had tremendous success over with clubs over. In Otis the Redding, by the yeah, way, yeah, yeah. Otis Redding. Uh, yeah. like, like like huge. He was he was with the John Coltrane yeah. thing and, and Otis Redding. So all right, so I want to throw a band out there that I, I did not know until today, and they're rated number eight. The Lambrettas. Oh, the Lambrettas. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I only know one or two tunes by them, but um no, they're quite a nice band there. Again, they're they're one of those ones that are really trying to capture the feel of people like the small faces and the kinks well um, i i think the small faces they 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 sounded a little bit more to me and i, I listened to two songs that, that i liked uh, one was poison ivy yeah yeah um, one, my favorite poison. yeah and and um the other one it's like dance like with three a's in it it's like d-a-a-a -A -A dance yeah. Damn. I've heard that one. <laughs> it was actually pretty interesting it was it was a good song so uh you know, I, I was trying to kind of go through all this list and, and listen to songs and, yeah. and write down the ones that I, that I found a little bit different. And uh, so you're just going sure. down through that list. Are you just going? Or are we just going from one through? I, I think we go at least one through yeah. ten, and then throw yeah. some others out there that I okay. that I kind of uh, I think that we all know that I was yeah. not make the top ten because because the next one here, and again, we're still we're not in the ten yet, but the next one was the chords. Yeah, I, I don't know who are they. See, again, I've heard of them, but I don't think I actually know any songs. They were another one of the Revival 78 through 81 bands. I couldn't find any. They've got a very cool logo. I really like their logo. Yeah, yeah. Here's, here's a... I'm getting a very it, it, sense of this is kind of going back to our Rock and Roll Hall of Fame episode where yes. people cite these bands that maybe sold 5,000 records. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but I mean, is the Merton Parkers on your list out of interest? Who? who? The Merton Parkers. No, no, they're, they're, they're not, not on this, not it, this list. I think and, we're, and, 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 and it might be later on in the list too, because I, I stopped. On the list? Oh yes, yeah, we we, we well, actually the, the original like not Man for Man's Earth Band, but oh, Man for Man, do a diddy diddy dum diddy. Yeah, 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 yeah I'll get there. But, but number ten, and this is one of the super yes. influential groups. There you the go, Spencer Davis Group. Yeah, and, 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 and they yeah they should be high. 
I never I never thought of them as being mod. I just thought of them as being <laughs> They're good music, but yeah, I wouldn't necessarily consider them mod. Yeah. I'm a man. <laughs> I just thought of them as being Steve Winward. Um, no, but you know that 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 they, they're that road they road are rated road number road ten. Road um, so so I I got in the ten. Then I wanted to go to like some of the bands that weren't in even close to the top number ten. Twenty one. <laughs> yeah. Oasis. Yeah, and I, I, <laughs> I uh, really. Yeah. Well, before you, before you go okay, there, no. okay. before you go to before you go to the Oasis, the, for me when I was a kid, listening to this stuff, uh, the Pretty Things were just Oh yeah. yeah. They were Pretty Things are in the in the list by the way. Yeah, they are. And yeah, they, they were are. just pretty, they Pretty they Things by the way, 1963. Uh yeah. Don't Bring Me Down, um number 16. So But you, uh, but you know the Pretty people. Things what they were doing basically is that kind of bo diddly beat, you know. No, I, I, absolutely, and and uh, but they they were top six. The this the group that I thought was kind of funny is the Birds. Yeah, what? I know, right? I was uh, Mr. Know. Tambourine Man, and they're a California band, but what? somehow they were considered. They what? were they were on the mod. They were on the mod list. list. Sorry, who is this list written by? <laughs> It's cut by the ranker. It's bad. Uh, it's it's, oh, it's the ranker, ranker, is it? No, it's referenced. It's actually referenced. It gives you all the lists of every <laughs> top of everything. List. That's a ranker list. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. So, uh, but but yeah, so I, that was. But Manfred Mann is there, number nineteen. The Mighty Quinn, uh, do what did you're, you're, right, you're ready for one of the biggest, the biggest uh, of Fox on the Run. But no, but Craig, the, Craig, remember the birds, the our birds, the American yes. birds are by RDS. Right, right. This is this is the B I R D S. Yeah, oh yeah, I have yeah. No different... idea who they are. Right. Yeah, no, but yeah, no. Mr. Tambourine Man is them. No, it's the B Y R D S. No, they had it. Right. Okay, the <laughs> California band. Maybe they covered it too. Um. Okay. Unless they just spelled it wrong on that list. Which Man, just, but there's... but you know one thing, I, I I love the idea of the bands, but I'm I'm kind of more curious about the social impact of these of groups of kids kind of finding their tribe if you will and it creates this you know because every we have to feel like we belong to a tribe well, and somehow you know people are gravitating well i'm a mod well i'm a rocker well i'm a greaser well i'm a preppy there's the line I'm, there's well, the line in a, in a hard day's night where they're i think they were asking john john are you a, are you a mod or are you a rocker oh, yeah i'm a mocker Mocker, I mean, there you I go, mean, right? Wanna, yeah. I want to ask you a question to everybody. So I know a few mockers. Uh, let, let, <laughs> let, let, <laughs> Cody, Cody, take, well, take. Going back to Eric's point, or people's points about, you know, having someone to claim or like a group to claim based off of music. Is there anything yeah. cooler that when you meet a stranger and they know one of like your hidden bands that you're oh, like, yeah. I remember being in Washington, D.C. and I ran into a kid that was my age that loved Robert Palmer. You, and I like yeah. spent the oh. whole night talking about Robert yeah, Palmer. Yeah, yeah. And not just like, not just like, um, like the, the pop stuff, but like the early stuff that was from uh, the uh, guy uh, from Little, uh, Little, Little Feet. Feet. Yeah. And I remember Little Feet and like, Tower of Power. Dude, I instantly they're... became friends with this person. I still talk to them a little bit to this day, but I thought that was like the coolest thing. So there's yeah. nothing like when you can claim yeah. like musical interest with a group of people. I well, think that's one of the big things with like the mods. The, and the this, the, yeah, that's like, exactly one of the greatest things about it is, is like I, I live. Um, I used to live in Newcastle up in the north, but now I live on the south coast. We're literally about I think twenty or thirty miles away from Brighton, so where it all sort of originated. So you, you go and, to Brighton a lot then in this like summertime and things, right? Well, actually, no, because oh. um, in the last Brighton is really trying to sort of change its look at the moment, change the way it's perceived. And they're really moving away from all that sort of history. <laughs> they shut down. There was, there was a famous promenade that we used to sort of like put all our scooters on during the Mod Festival. And they shut it down. They shut access to it during the um, holiday now. Okay. We can't use it. And actually, these days, the biggest Mod Festival is on the Isle of Wight, which is literally like there's, like, there's a ferry to it about 10 minute walk away from here. Yeah. Got it. So that, there was a movie with Martin Sheen called Heartland. And there was a, I think the whole end of the movie, it takes place in Brighton, basically. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's a great movie. I'm finishing the great view of Brighton, like too. Third time speaking of Martin Sheen. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> Martin Sheen. Um, you, know, you know what I wanted to bring up was the, the rocker look. So, I mean, at least in, in the United States, everybody's been a rocker. Everybody's dressed with, with a leather jacket, jeans. And, uh, even and, I've got a leather jacket. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I definitely wanted to be Fonz. <laughs> you know, yeah, Fonz. I mean, yeah, between that and then Grease being, I remember growing up, like, Grease was such a big movie. I, I bought yeah. 
pomade. Had a leather jacket at one oh, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, it, but but on the other hand, I, I think I've certainly in college dressed the, the part of a mod. Yeah, you know, I where I go mod as opposed to rocker at this point. I do love suits. I mean, I've been dressing like this. Oh look look, look 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 who's uh, made his uh, new. Uh, there you go. He's a rocker. He's, he's got the he's leather. It, you it, asking for a punch up, man? Come on. <laughs> and, and, and I was gonna say, but Core is more of a punk rock guy. I mean, Core well, is a punk well, guy. I would actually, I, I think I'd argue I'm a glam rocker, which is kind of the in between between the mods and the, the mods and the punks. I see. Well, I, I would disagree with you. I think you're. Yeah, more I don't know about that. Yeah, no, I, so I, I, does does a does a mod end up being a fan of uh, who is the mayor of London? I'm forgetting the guy's name. Oh, Boris Johnson. Yes, or does a rocker grow up being a fan of Boris Johnson? They, they, they it's not exclusive to be honest. There's no, it's not a really a political thing like the punks yeah. was. Yeah. Um, I mean, originally when it first started, it was very much uh, a sort of a liberal movement, a European movement, because the rockers originally were a sort of more um boomer boom, i don't know how to describe it sort of more conservative let's say that oh really um but it's lost all sort of political identity now there is yeah. no sort of like like because i'm a mod i'm this you know i'm necessarily conservative i'm necessarily lib dems or labor that yeah. sort of thing yeah. Didn't, yeah didn't like the didn't like the ska skinheads kind of feel the same way like what the hell happened to our movement like yeah it was it was actually <laughs> that is one of the biggest disgraces to um uh, English identities was was the way that the right wing took took over the punk and skinhead movement and made it seem like a horrible racist thing. When you know, I know some genuine skinheads, like some obviously not outside yeah. of that kind of movement, just like normal skinhead just and the skinhead. loveliest people you ever meet. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's no, there's not 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 a bit of malice in their bones, but but you have those sort of people who who take the the look of it. Um, and the culture of it, essentially, and turn it into something Hot warped just, yeah. and horrible, yeah, you know? Like yeah. like there are good thing. people on both sides. Oh, so. hey, yeah. hey, the show, yeah. the show, the show, the show. Does... <laughs> Come on, I had to no, throw it in there. No, Eric's no. even applauding that one. Come on. No. Just, <laughs> throw that easy softball pitch in there. Come oh, on. Oh, God. Hit it out of the park. Craig just hit it out of the park. Oh. Ah, so, um. It's so over, is there is there a connection from Dutch the mod? Did, did the mods kind of uh, turn into the glam thing? Is there a? I'm I'm not sure about that. I mean, I mods itself, it. like David it, Bowie, it turned into a, yes, yeah. I mean, David Bowie in particular had a little mod phase. Well, even um, Mark Boland to a degree. Yeah, Mark, Mark Boland. Boland. Yeah, Mark Boland. But, but I'm uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm guessing there's definitely influences. Yeah. yeah, but it was sort of like. The influence is kind of wild. Pro, you know, a progression where you yeah. know, the mods are kind of like, they're kind of being that, you know, kind of little fey, a little dainty, a little whatever. But uh, Yeah, I mean, you could definitely draw a link, yeah. Yeah, yeah I get that. Like but, you, not, not a, but I'm hearing not a not a big connection, you know. Don't, not, not direct as such. I mean, yeah. probably, I'll say that, it was probably about as direct as the Teddy Boys were to the mods. Completely yeah. different movements, but very yeah. similar style. Yeah, I almost think you know the American I mean? punks, the American glam rockers, might be a little more towards the mod. Like, think of like even like the like the. Um, so I, I was so New, disagree the New, with the New you York, on that. The, fashion wise, think of like the New York Dolls or Blondie. Yeah, but they, they, that's well, not a mod. Like, well, they, 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 they were they, they stole. The, think of Blondie. They were playing kind of like they, you know, they, they were more a transgender look than a mod. Well, look. yeah, Aiden. I mean, Aiden. Yes. Were there any were there any British groups that used as much hairspray as some of our American groups? <laughs> Androgynous, I, I'm maybe. not sure about that. The word no. you're for. <laughs> okay, and what would be the difference? A lot of things, but that's for I was, another podcast. I was just kidding. <laughs> I'm just saying, in look, what would be the difference? Not, not, either not, way, either way. So, um, but you know, I, 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 I had a. I think it's important. Uh, one of the things to distinguish mod from uh, of these, like the other things, is even though it's like quite broad, it's actually quite specific as well. Like, for example, if in the community you get, you have to have a three button blazer. It can't be two button, it can, or it can be double breasted, but okay. it can't be three button, it can't be one button. It has to be a three button blazer um, or a double, double breasted one with two buttons. Uh, you know, if you're, wearing a Fred, if you're wearing a polo shirt, it has to be a Fred Perry, that sort of thing. Okay. And like your jeans have to be Levi's 501s. 501. It's, it's quite specific, you know? Got it. But, Got it. But there's still a lot of room for freedom in that. Like, there's every color of red Perry shirt you could possibly imagine, every color of free button suit you could possibly imagine. And what you wear underneath it is, you know, entirely up to you. Any sort of shirt, cravat, tie. I'll say this, there's no strict rule on it. 
it's but just the Fred that's... Perry. So the Fred Perry is the the one with the little long. Well, Fred Laurel. Perry was a tennis player, and that's yeah, you know, yeah, the, yeah. The yeah he's a British tennis player in the fifties. Yeah, um, and he invented this, this polo shirt essentially. Yeah. Um, well, Brooks Brothers, uh, they went. Uh... Yeah, I wanted to ask Aiden. I, I mean, is there? Would you say that there's a and I? This could be a hard yes or a hard no. Would you say there's a correlation between the the American hipster movement and the ties to the mod community? Uh, so there was ties definitely, especially. Um, actually in the drug scene yeah you think uh, because yeah. one thing that, that, that did go along in the, in the drug scene um in both of them was i mean the, the hippies were more towards sort of like psychedelics and weed that sort of stuff the calming thing the mods were more towards the uppers like speed that kind of stuff but there was yeah. still a still a connection there there was still like you, you could go out on a night out and with both types of people would be there so i'm yeah. not sure how much they had a, a a connection in themselves but they were definitely around each other a lot so, so here's what I, I wanted to go just because we, we've talked mod and rockers, but but I want to get into the other part of the British invasion because yeah, sure. well, because yeah, because yeah, if invasion. you think about it, uh, there are groups that are not considered either, and and yeah. you know, actually, there's we, a question I've been waiting to ask okay, on that go, topic go ahead, all day. We'll, we'll go there. The term British invasion to you, Aiden. Mm. So, like, what the is that? Is that like so? Is, I guess I'm trying. I'm trying to formulate how I want. I've been thinking about this question all day, but I never figured out how I wanted to um, ask it. Um, well, I guess it would be for for someone who who lives in England. Who, the what, term what, British invasion. Yeah, what, what is your... that? So for me, the British invasion. Even though there were, there were bands that came before it, the British invasion started with the Beatles. It was the first time it got big. It got really big. You know, it was an invasion. You know. Um, I agree. And, I don't think any of the mod bands that came before it, even if they did go to the US, do a few sort of, you know, a few shows, I don't think any of them were big enough to be counted as part of the British invasion. So so uh, that, that's that's right. One, so, so Corey, you kind of led into it. So top 10 British invasion bands that were not mods. So the Rolling Stones, what do we consider the Stones? Them, yeah. Um, well, I mean... Everything. Yeah, because they, they, they certainly were a blues rockers. band, right? I mean... They, they were... They were very well dressed rockers. Okay. Yeah, and re oh, remember yeah. when the Stones? So you had the Beatles, who were clean cut, right? And the Stones, who were considered kind of, kind of unkempt. Yeah, yeah. Stephen Van Zant had a great line uh, where he said, "The Beatles made me want to become a rock musician. The Stones made yeah. me realize I could become a rock." Musician. <laughs> and I thought yeah, that's yeah. fitting because you go, you talk about Eric like the clean cut. Yeah. You know, the clean riffs, and then the stones come, and it's all energy based. I mean, yeah, tremendous musicians. There's no the Paul McCartney in the Rolling Stones. Right. The, the live yeah, performance yeah. is, is kind of more energetic. All when right. The so, stones, so when the stones came on, uh, I think it was the Dean Martin show, or Dean Martin was hosting, I don't it, it was an early iteration of one of his shows. And he blasted this, you know, made this really snide remark about the stones being, you know, unkempt and dirty to have they showered or that kind of thing who's and, laughing and, now yeah right right <laughs> that's right yeah. uh, um I, but okay. it was a big deal it was a big deal because the beatles represented it something that parents could relate to and the stones were something that they were more parents, of a youth thing yeah i want to hold yeah. your hand versus let's spend the night together <laughs> yeah, right 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 uh, yeah. <laughs> i guess that's why i was I, i've always been the stones uh over the beatles on on, on, on mine but yeah. even yeah. though the beatles even though the beatles paul mccartney wrote uh you know, Lennon and McCartney wrote one of the Stones' first big hits. Yes. I want to be your lover, baby. I want to be uh, your man. So I wanted to I wanted to throw out another band that, that is a top five, uh, the Zombies. Mm -hmm. So zombies. what would be the Zombies the mods. they considered? Oh, no, oh. this is for British Invasion bands. Well, I was British saying, invasion. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I really like them personally. I think they're a great band, but... Yeah, they're, they're definitely one of those bands. A little are. Motown sound to them, right? I mean, that, that was yeah. definitely. Colin Blunt's oh, definitely did a yeah. origin. So, Aiden, we had a TV show over here called The Mod Squad. Ah. Right. And Peggy Lipton. Peggy Lipton. And it's like, there was, was that like, I wonder if there's, if that was just, oh, let's call it The Mod Squad because of the mod thing going on in England. 
He's going to be. Not sure I've seen it. <laughs> I don't think I've seen it. I've watched a lot of old TV programs, but I don't think I've seen that. Yeah, that, that, that's that's early early seventies, yeah. late sixties. The Mod Squad. That's, that's nineteen sixty eight. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, I, I yeah. used to watch it every night with my dad, or at least once a week <laughs> when it was on. But uh, I watched specifically for uh, Peggy. But it's just, it's just kind of odd that the Mod Squad. What does that even mean? Do we all know who, the, who <laughs> Peggy lived and married? <laughs> The name mod is short for modernist because uh, that was what it was at the time. Um, so maybe it could be that it's just the modern squad well, rather than that mod squad. Go. I don't know yeah. if this is just a play on words or if this has any significance, but one of Rod Stewart's nicknames was, was Rod, Rod the Mod. The mod. Well, so I was, he was yeah. early, yeah, way early on. So he was in the same band that Elton John started with. Um, um, Long John, um, oh my god, uh, not Volby, John Volby is the, the dirty comedian, singer. yeah, but, um. Loudry, 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 Long John Loudry. But, but Corey, oh, yeah, 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 I, I yeah, needed yeah, right to finish my Peggy Lipton yeah, so thing. Finish your Peggy Lipton. And I, I'm going to tell you why, because you're going to be uh, very amazed who she was married to. Uh -oh. I feel was, like I know this. She was married to the most famous, probably producer, singer, songwriter in American anything. Mutt Lang? No. No, I figured. Neil <laughs> Diamond? Uh, no, no. She probably was also one of the few probably at her time inter an interracial marriage that was well before anybody else oh the um oh Jones? Quincy, Jones. Quincy Jones Peggy Lipton was married to Quincy, Quincy Jones uh, Quincy I just found out last year that Rashida Jones is Quincy Jones daughter yes wow yes yeah. and and that's Amazing. Peggy's daughter yeah. so uh you know, and you gotta you gotta understand I mean that at the time that was a, that was a big thing uh, yeah I mean you know so uh oh Donald. by the way here's kind of a random question for you so when Mark Boland uh, get it on, bang a gong. Get yeah. it on, bang who is gong. who is playing in the in the video with him? Elton John. That's on there, the on the piano. There you go. Yeah, yeah, right. On the uh, on the reflective mirrored piano. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's an awesome video of Ringo, Elton John, and Mark Bolin, the three of them playing Children of the Revolution together that they used in the T Rex um Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction. And I'm like. That is so cool. That's like, <laughs> hey, hey, not for nothing. T Rex, the only That's other, the only other yeah, band. To, I agree, not T Rex. The only, uh, the only other band to have a named movement after the Beatles was T Rex with T Rex to see. Really? Yeah, I that think was, that's because it's a very good name. To be fair, I think I've got a lot to do with it. Well, it's interesting. Um, let's segue for a minute from you know the British invasion, kind of tying into the times with America. Talk to us about the the animals a little bit, because I mean, one of the, the best Vietnam protest songs we got to get out of this place yeah. comes from a, from an English band. So, yeah, and as a bass player, that song that's got to be like that. That's it. That is one of my favorite bass lines ever. That boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Killer. I mean, the animals, I think they were, I'm not so sure how much they were actually mods themselves. Again, I think it was, a lot, a lot of these bands that are classed as really big in the mod scene weren't necessarily so big in the mod scene at the time. They were seen as really big in the aftermath because they marked themselves really well. Yeah, do you feel like there's yeah. like, um, almost like a retroactive, like once somebody breaks through or looking back, they go, yeah. oh, they're mods, they were mods, of course they're That's mods. The thing. They're I mean, the who? Like, no, not really. The Who were only, they only marketed themselves as mods very briefly. It wasn't a very long thing. It was, it was like through the, I think through the late 70s, very early 80s, and then a little bit before then. They're um, in that, they're in well, the they have the movie. Also. I mean, it, it's yeah. the movie that kind of. Yeah, they had the movie. I yeah. think the, the, the album for the movie was written in 73, and that was when they were sort of the, the prime peak of their marketing then. Um, but they, they weren't, like, after that came out and after that sort of time, they didn't really try and push themselves as mods anymore i mean roger Daltrey got his big hair and they started pushing themselves more just like rockers just what's more stuck happened? british rockers than mods well it's funny that reminds me of the roger Daltrey. he opened up his he opened up his shirt at woodstock and came exactly. out in that jacket and all of a sudden oh, bye. completely different i love that scene in spinal tap when they're talking about the history of the band and how they kind of had all those different looks trying to chase like Listen. fame they were the originals, the then, then they became the new originals, and then they became the Tamesmen. Yeah, then, yeah. If you, you keep trying stuff until you find the one that works, and then you claim that one. But what about, I mean, we're back on the British invasion in list now, too, so there might not be that mod connection, but Herman's Hermits. I mean, this is my mom. My mom's first show was Herman's Hermits. No, oh, at the Har wow. Har Peter Noon. She Herman's loved Peter Noon at the Hartford oh. Civic Center, I think, 1950. Yeah. 
Or not, it was Pacific <laughs> Center back or se- Yeah, late 60s, early 70s, I think. Peter Noon. Mm-hmm. That man ha- must have had so much Botox in his life because he, <laughs> his face looks so puffy to this day. Um, yeah, so I, the, the animals were actually, were they an Irish group? Newcastle? Uh, no, no, Newcastle. Oh my God, I, that offends me. No, Newcastle's <laughs> England. Oh, oh, oh try, trust me, oh. we had we had the conversation earlier how okay. about how we weren't going to discuss um, Van Morrison and them because the only border in Ireland is the ocean. Yes. Yes, that's right. So yes. Newcastle in England so it's northern England. It's very yes. close to Scotland. Yes. Um, but it's northeast England. Okay. Uh, and yeah, they're, they're from Newcastle. But how about the Hollies? The Newcastle Brown to sure smack you down. Because and, and I know Graham Nash, David Crosby, Stephen Stills, I, and, and and I did, love the Hollies. Of the Hollies, I love the Hollies, and I think that what's fun about the Hollies is what it, not dissimilarly to well his later bandmate and I would say pro, one of their contemporaries across the ocean, the Birds. One of the cases where the the backup singer, the harmony singer, is the guy who ended up be, making it big in the band. The Holly Graham Nash, the 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 yeah, probably the singer that had one of the singers who had the most oh. influence on me because of just that just yeah, ridiculous, just high harmony. Yeah, and, and just me thinking, yeah. if All you're right. gonna sing harmony, sing Corey, high. I I have one for you. Let's see if we can. Yeah, this is a band that was considered a mod band, but it was not from England. It was from Canada, which Ooh. would make sense at the time, especially Squire. Now, do you know who the the big star of Squire was? Well, I'm I'm seeing on your page what it happened to be Ontario's own Neil Young, and that's why I brought it up. Neil Young, yeah. interesting, most American interesting. Polit- interesting. politically involved Canadian ever. Yeah, ever, yeah. I mean, hey. <laughs> do you know the? Okay, okay. I know you know. I know you know the answer to this. You might know. Do you? Another fun thing with Neil Young that has to do with <laughs> I do know with, that has to do with the record label we brought up earlier. Neil Young was signed to Motown in a band. Yes, yes, yeah, a, yeah. With another very famous individual who oh, I mean, happened to be the feature of an episode of a show that is now on American Netflix, <laughs> the, the Chappelle Show. Rick James? Neil Young was in a band with Rick no. James Rick, called The Minor yes, James, baby. Yeah, the yeah, amount yeah. of yeah. cocaine. I remember reading that. And saying, cocaine, that. the hell of a drug. Now, tell, tell, tell what happened, why that so, band broke up, because well, yeah. that's even more interesting. So Rick, Rick, James, Rick James was trying to get out of Vietnam by joining the Navy. Now, how does that make sense? I don't know. But as we know famously from Mr. James and his quotations, cocaine is a hell of a drug. And... <laughs> We digress, though. So he decides, I'm going to go AWOL from the Navy. I'm going to hop the border into Canada, and I'm going to go into Ontario, where he happens to meet Neil Young and a few other people who would eventually join the Buffalo Springfield. But they're like, let's go become, like, great. Like, oh, my God, Rick James, you're this wonderful bass player and singer, and you have so much soul. And I'm Neil Young, this really stocky, pale Canadian boy who can play guitar really filthily. And can we, we should start a band. And they started a band called the Minor Birds. And they went over and they auditioned for Motown and they got signed to Motown. But then when they went over the border <laughs> back, yeah. when they went to go sign the, the contract at Motown in, in Michigan, well, you know, Rick James had gone AWOL. So they kind of arrested him at the border. <laughs> Poor Rick. He, 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 super freak. Yeah, he was a super freak. And I, I remember when he kidnapped that girl. For like, oh, my you know, God. Rick, Rick, Rick had Rick some Jay. issues. Uh, Rick, may he rest in peace. Mr. Cocaine James. is a hell. Charlie Murphy, may he also rest yeah. in peace. Uh, yeah, Charlie, yeah. Murphy. Charlie Murphy. Charlie Murphy. Um, anyway. And, and 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 so Dave Chappelle live in peace. I, I want to do uh, I want to do some more. So I, I earlier in the show at the beginning of the show I I put up the sacrilegious most famous band that the English supposedly believe is the is the greatest band and Her Majesty the Queen. Queen. Yeah. Queen. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I, I want to ask Aiden. I want to ask Aiden that. In in your eyes, is is this list uh, at all a- accurate? That, that this Queen isn't a mod, would... and not a mod list, but the greatest yes. British band, the greatest all British band of all time. Mm. Yes, and, Zeppelin. And, and they, they have Zeppelin. they they have Queen as number one. 
Mm. Led Zeppelin. Um, mm. Yeah, I mean, I like Queen, but personally, nah. Yeah. Do it for me. And Freddie and, and Mercury, was, Freddie Mercury, where is Freddie Mercury's statue? It's in um, Zanzibar. 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 Actually, really? There's another oh, one. Wow. There's another one. There's another. Oh, one. in um, Switzerland. Yes, yes. In the city of the town of Montreux. But but I, here, here's yeah. the thing that I've always got to mention because I've always heard that Queen was more popular in England than any other band, um, especially while they were, you know, at, at the highlights of, of their band, they were the number one. Much more, much bigger That's than they were first. in the United States, but in England they were the band. Um, my first album was Queen, actually. Is it a night the, the first ever album I got was a Christmas present from my nan and granddad, and they got me Queen Greatest Hits on CD. Yeah. Nice. And I liked them. I did like them. It was a really good sort of introduction. But I think they got me it because they knew it's a very, <sighs> it's very easy to listen to. It's it's yeah. very good music. Don't get me it's wrong. Much but it's talking, very... you ended up as a bass player then. Layden, how old were you when you got it as a gift? Quite young, uh, probably say, like 12 or so. Yeah, Queen's so. great too. I mean, Queen's great in general, but at that age, because there's so much going on Dude, sonically, oh, yeah. especially Ball. if you listen to your headphones, Dude, it's like Ball. everything's Ball. blended left and right. Flash it's Gordon. Gordon. Well, I just Flash. Like a TV player, but yeah. yeah. It's, um, they're good. Don't get me wrong, they're good, but like, I, I, I personally don't think they're Layden, real quick, I mean, not to put you on the spot, but not necessarily in order, not to take with you to the grave, but what would you say your top five? British bands are well as it stands. Um, yeah, in so, order or nothing. Yeah, not in an sure. order, yeah. but just so it would be the Kinks, the Small Faces, the Who, uh, Pink Floyd, and who else got one more. I have one more. The Jam, be the oh. Jam. All right, so, so actually, you, you know I... what? four out of five are mods. Yeah, can I'm I... very heavy into it because my dad was was big into it, and that's where I got a lot of my music taste from. Awesome. All right, Corey. I listen to a lot of other stuff, but that's my sort of favorite stuff. If you know what I mean? Aiden, is the action considered a mod band? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've heard them before. The action like, seekers as well. I remember somebody Quite came similar. up to me when we were playing at Carmine's once and handed me a CD from the action and just goes, just listen to this. You'll like it. And I didn't realize how many songs by the action I actually knew because I knew Brain and I knew yeah. two of the other ones just because they've been in a this, bunch this, of the yeah, there's a few songs by them that I've sort of heard on the radio, but I hadn't realised I'd heard before, and I put them on my Spotify once. I was yeah. like, oh, I know this, I know this. They, yeah, they do a pretty cool... Na, like, na, 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 na. <laughs> right. Actually, I was going to ask the kind of the reverse question and do this to everybody. Aiden, I want to know your top five American bands. Everybody else, I want to know your top five British bands. Okay. Because I want to just see a. I want to see. I, I want to. I want to see a perception. Does it have thing. to be bands, or can it be solo artists too? I'll go with solo artists too, because uh, I. I just want to see like a perception thing here. Uh, everyone, take take a moment. I, can I go is, first? Yeah, go for it. All right. So I would say Robert Palmer. Um, uh, let's go with the Beatles, the Stones. Um, uh, I'm I'm cruising here now. Uh, Rod Stewart or the Faces, give me either one, and Jamie T. Okay. Yeah. I like Jamie T. Actually, yeah, I love Jamie T. Um. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna have to have a minute to think on it, so someone else can go. So I'm gonna. Ha I definitely have to say the Beatles, the Who, and uh, favorites. Right, we're going. Yeah. You, you, it was yeah. your question. Yeah, it was my question. I was forget. <laughs> I forgot if I had said. Um, so, so the, Be the Beatles, the Who, um, David Bowie, um, <laughs> like I don't want to, I don't want to be made fun of. Well, uh, uh, go ahead, admit that Tom Jones is in your no, top five. No, Tom Jones is not in my top five. <laughs> um. Oh my God! Oh, this is this is crazy. It's, um, All right, the Clash go. and the Sex Pistols. That's a, that's a solid. Record. All right, that, that's 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 solid. Eric, go ahead. Yeah. You know, think... I've got a bit of an issue here because, like, there's I can think of a load of bands that I think are American, but I don't actually know if they are or not. I can confirm. <laughs> ah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, I well, know CCR is. I really like them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So CCR. I'll go with CCR. I'll go down my, a bit of a list here that I got. Uh, ooh. Let me see. Uh, uh, blossoms. Are they the gin blossoms or blossoms? No, just the, yeah, just blossoms. Um, I don't. Think I don't even know. I don't even know who that is. I will be searching something on um, um, on, on Apple Music tonight. 
Aiden, just a heads up. We're losing your video. We can still hear you, though. Yeah, yeah no, it's because I'm going for my Spotify list at the moment. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is quite difficult, actually. I really don't know the nationalities of my <laughs> of my artists. Yeah, see, it's uh, easier for us to do I the know. England thing. You know, England's like just, where it yeah. all starts for us. Yeah, I sort of know. Like, <laughs> so I'm going to take out the Clash and I'm going to put it in Genesis. Yeah, I'm surprised no one had said yes. Uh, yeah, uh, well, yeah, I, yeah. I, I'll, I'll give you my five because I know them. Okay. Yeah. All right, so the Rolling Stones are my number one. Okay. The Beatles are, are, are number two. Queen is number three for me. The Who is number four, and then I'm going to surprise the crap out of you. Black Sabbath would be number five for me. That was very nice, yeah. Uh, very nice. I know, I like that. I dig that. So well, I have got to say, actually, if, if those are my top five, then the Rolling Stones would probably be my six. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I, love I think uh, I, I definitely want to put Led Zeppelin up there. I want to include uh, Yes. I love Yes, too. I forgot yeah, about Yes. yes. Mm. They're really good. The Yardbirds. Of Amazing. Amazing. Uh, so Zep, the Yardbirds, Yes, the Kinks. And, oh, my gosh. Um, you know, the Stones have such have had such a long career, and I think they've had a bunch of misses along with so many of their their hits, their greatest stuff uh, you know what you know i'm gonna tell you eric about the stones and and whenever Corey or cody yeah. whenever they play a stones cover one of the biggest songs of the night no matter what bar no matter what party it is when i've watched the two of them whether they're together or whether they're separate the stone songs have always been the killer i mean yeah, even the other night, yeah you know when we, we played a latino uh, Halloween party. Yeah. And and when they played the Stone songs, the place went wild. And the week before, we played at the anniversary party. Same thing. So yeah. the Stones, whether or not their, their hits were as uh, crazy together like the Beatles were. Right. Yeah. Well, they think the Stones I'm also, I'm, take, I'm taking out the Sex Pistols. I'm putting them in Joy Division. <laughs> oh, yeah. Me? Joy Division, very good, actually. Yeah. You know, for but me, I think so... Oh, actually, early I'll, I'll stones, like, are you rolling your own tobacco? Yeah. Oh, that's badass. So you have Led <laughs> Zeppelin, <laughs> you've got the Led Zeppelin, you've got the Kinks, you've yes. got the Yardbirds, you've got Yes. You know, for fifth place, the Stones' first three albums, and then Cream. Oh yeah, I love Cream. Nobody put Cream. Love it as Cream, actually. Yeah, I've it's got a, I've got a double a double uh, album. Yeah, that, that cream. double the double cream I album. Thought you were about yeah. to say you've got a thing a double cream in his fridge. Yes. <laughs> well, Aiden, it's even better than <laughs> Aiden. Can I ask you something real quick? Just if you could talk about it for just a minute or two, because I noticed on our list of mods, can you just talk about like the the next wave of mods or like the current kind of climate of it? Because I noticed Oasis was on the list of greatest. Yeah, mods. so so the sort of nineties era. Right. So the thing is with Oasis, again, they're, they're, they were really commercialising the modern name, like the, the most out of any of them, definitely, because they were never mods themselves. Right. Um, but Liam, was it Liam Gallagher? Yeah, he started, he, he managed to start a whole clothing brand off of the name of mod. Pretty green. And it's now quite a yeah. recognised thing. There's Captain polo shirts, Vision. there's parkas, that sort of thing. But that sort of 90s revivalism, that was um, Britpop. But yeah. because... There was nothing else for the mods at the time to sort of latch on to. Anyone who identified as mod went to Brit Pop. And that's why Liam Gallagher is now very well known for his parkas and his polo shirts. Yeah, but, but does that he all, may well have been mod himself? But does that also was, open like Bush and like um, Bush. Blur and stuff like that? Well, I was gonna say, weren't there bit wasn't uh, Oasis's big enemy always Blur? Well, for a while until yeah. Just but the thing is, Blur were just they, they did the same thing. You know, a, a lot of people would consider Blur mod bands as well. So and I say you... it is because, but not out of, not out of how the thing sort of naturally went, but how it was sort of forced to go because there was a vacuum. Um, all the bands suddenly died out. In England, is it's there... fun. Or, or, sorry, I was going to say it's funny. A song that got famous for a band for a song called "Song 2 didn't yeah. have more than two songs. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ian, I want to ask you this. And... They're actually pretty popular over here. Um, both Blur, obviously Oasis, but Blur were quite popular as well. They had quite a few big hits over here. 
Eric, I want to get your input on this, but Aiden, I just want to ask you a question. We have this very kind of stupid thing over here in America where <laughs> if people are fans of bands and then all of a sudden they get commercially successful, people tend to call them sellouts yeah. or, or they get pissed off because their band is now everybody else's band. And I remember, and I don't know, being over in the UK, I was a huge huge still am to this day kings of leon fan from the first two <laughs> records then they blew up in england and then they came back with sex on fire and used somebody over here and all of a sudden they were everywhere but i never got i was never upset i was so happy because finally everybody was listening to the music oh, I, need to yeah, I, need to I wonder if there's that is that there's is there that stupidity over in england or europe where it's just like oh these guys the are 1975 so loud, blah, blah, blah. or like not at all um in fact uh good that was the answer i was hoping we, we sort of love it do you know what i mean like if a small band like there's um Say like the Lambertas, for example, they started off as very small band. They're still not a huge band. So when I sort of right speak to someone else oh. and sort of go, oh, you know, about Lambertas, they go, oh, yeah, I know that. Like, oh, brilliant. Nice. You know, like, a, like a sports team or an athlete that you're rooting for. And finally, when they get up to that plateau and then they're exactly. finally, you, you have that sense of like, I always remember like the first time I heard Kings of Leon on the radio over in America. I was like, this is awesome. Like, I felt like it was my song on the radio. Like, I've been listening to this song for years. years. Now it's on pop radio. And I got like a super sense of excitement. And I was just hoping that you would say the answer you said. So, you know, I, 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 I've got another <laughs> band to add to my list as well. Um, Kings of Leon and- the There Killers. you go, man. Right. You know, I was, I was thinking about two bands who, who um, got that because they realized that their style wasn't making it where they needed to be. And I always think about the Bee Gees. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the, I love the Bee Gees. My girlfriend's a massive fan of the Bee Gees. And, and when you think about it, hey, look, they, they, they did their thing. Right. And, and then they realized, hey, the disco era is coming. And they were smart enough to move to the most popular, you know, genre of music Arguably at that point. the biggest disco song, too. Ab yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Disco songs, yeah. You know, yeah. and um, the, the other band, which I brought up earlier today, Jay Giles. I mean, they were a classic blues band, and then they went pop. I love Jay Giles, because and, and I love them. I did not mean this as a disc. They turned out to be a successful MTV band without good looks. Well, yeah. they're, they're not oh my like God. pretty boy, but they had a free Peter, frame and they had center pull. They had Peter, yeah, videos. Peter Wolf makes guys like me like really have hope. That's what I feel like too. And like, like I, shout out ass. to the time I thought Peter Wolf. Well, when you when you have a when you when you, when you have him a harmonica player named Magic Dick, what do you expect? That's <laughs> a rock and roll Damn right. Oh, I mean, right. God. Oh, baby. Um, it, but, but, but yeah, I, I think of those two bands as, as the band that everybody sell out, yada 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 yada. But no one ever said anything to Queen. You know, and and and, yeah, and they always did. yeah they always moved and they did they changed their all the time. I mean, they were they were constantly changing. Certainly, the Beatles. I mean, the Beatles constantly changed. Well, actually, they didn't sell out. They created the thing that everybody sold out to. Possibly that that, that could <laughs> well, be. Well, I just think Europe and in, in the UK primarily is just so far ahead of us with accepting <laughs> different music. Because you can like I from listening to English radio, you get like an R and B song followed by a couple, yeah, you, followed by a pop Scott. song. Scott. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Radio yeah and for us, song. it just shows the divide over here that we have to find out about American blues from <laughs> from the UK. But the, the one idea. thing I wanted to mention, you know, we talk about these bands, and we're forgetting really important element. You know, like the manager, like Brian. What would the Beatles be without Brian? Brian Epstein. Epstein. Yeah, uh, and and Robert Stigwood for the Bee Gees, or, uh, uh, Andrew Lou Golden. Yeah, and how much did these guys have in shaping the career of of these bands? That okay, boys, you're gonna you're gonna wear nice suits now. Drop the rocker stuff. Right, and arguably it begins and ends with the music because without good tunes, you're not going anywhere. But the Beatles. That's just a, that's how a Pete great, Best lost his job. That's, that's a hey, tremendous yeah. example of marketing at the marketing, farm. right? Pete yeah. Best lost his job because he didn't want to get rid of the haircut and go for the Hamburg style. And yeah. he was also better looking than the other three, and they didn't. Oh, like absolutely. <laughs> other than Paul, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm still with Paul. By yeah, the way, yeah, by the way, all, quick, I mean, quick question for everybody. Which favorite Paul, the original Paul, or the <laughs> <replacement>? <laughs> right? The replacement. Yeah, Paul. Paul. <laughs> quick, quick survey, everybody. Favorite Beetle, go, Dad. What, 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 my favorite Beatle? I'm Paul, but George would be a close second. Yes, I'd say Paul, but my mother loves George, so I have a soft spot for George. George, but Paul second. Aiden. Paul, but George second. <laughs> uh, George first. He he wrote the most aware songs. Now, now we all look at Corey and know who does Corey look like? George Harrison. Ringo. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Ringo. Whoa. <laughs> 
you know, you know what? You know, you if, know you what? Were, if you were, if you were, if you were an ocean away right now. <laughs> oh well, Corey, I tell you something. I saw the Beatles in Forest Hills, and the one Beatle who got the most screams, Ringo. George okay. or Ringo? <laughs> Ringo. Uh, hey, listen. Ringo married a Bond girl, yeah, so that's Ringo all we need to know. Well, Ringo, the, the, the peak of Ringo's career was now in Thomas the Tank Engine. Oh, yeah. hell yeah. <laughs> hey, my favorite Ringo song is still Photograph. I prefer hey, Ringo's Ringo. solo, solo That's like the stuff. saddest song in the world, even though it sounds so happy. <laughs> so wait, Cody brought up a good idea. So uh, were, were you kind of going towards does success ruin the artist? Hmm. Is that what you were saying before? You know, I, I mean, I just, well, I was hoping, I was wondering if it was over there because obviously, I mean, it, it depends on you okay? Yep. Okay. Uh, people. But like, Aiden, let me let me spin it kind of to this: Did, If a mod band comes successful, are they like looked down upon in the mod community? No, definitely yeah. not. No, the, the complete opposite. Happy, I would say. That would be answer. <laughs> Cody's moving to England, I'm, by the way, in I'm, about I'm two coming, weeks. I'm coming, man. I'm coming <laughs> with my Kings of Leon records and my Pico, and uh, I'm ready. <laughs> the peacoat is the peacoat still a thing in the uh, in the UK? Is it, what what is that? <laughs> oh, is that uh, oh, it's just like the I would like Cor Corey's been wearing a peacoat since I, he's like twelve. So, it's like a double breasted, <laughs> double breasted. So it's cotton. like a, like an over. It's a, it's half of an overcoat. So it's an overcoat that goes a little below the waist or at the waist. It's uh, a merchant. It's a merchant marine right. man. Yeah, it's a merchant marine. That's that's exactly. Uh, Okay, yeah, I think I, I think I great, know things. Great story um, with that. Oh, continue. I'm not sure how, how popular. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever, ever seen one. But well, I'm doing it for fashion. I'm bringing it over because I'm going to be well, cold as hell. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> so I, I, I always like these. I loved peacoats. Thought they always looked really cool. And my freshman year of high school, so I was like 15 years old. I got a peacoat for my birthday. It's like a rite of passage. Mm. It was like me I, when I got my Parker. That was like a rite of passage. Exactly. For me. I remember I, I you messaged me that day. You got the that's popcorn. right. I did. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. so happy. I bought a London Fog raincoat, and Sydney hates it, Whoa. so I can never wear it. It's wow, like, it's like olive green. She just goes, it just doesn't look good. No, I, go, yeah. I like it. But I, 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 I bought I bought this pea coat, and everyone made fun of me for four years for wearing this thing. They kept calling it a trench coat. It's not a trench coat. It's a pea coat. I think yes. it's a trench coat because you were so damn skinny at the time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. So, hey. Aiden, yeah. Aiden, is surf music no, popular wait, wait, over I'm there? Finishing, finishing real quick. And then all of a sudden, okay. a year after I graduate high school, everyone's wearing a goddamn peacoat. Yeah. Well, oh. well, Nick Zacchio. Nick Zacchio, one Nick of my dear best friends in the world. Nick, Nick, Nick tells the story. It's like, you know, I used to feel sorry. Everybody would just like bust on Corey all the time about that stupid peacoat. And then he said, all of a sudden, I'm in freaking college and every single goddamn person is wearing a stupid oh, peacoat. Dude. And all I can do is think about Corey and how the shit <laughs> me, that he took. Me, me in high school. <laughs> Literally wearing my Sex Pistols T-shirt, key coat over it, and my Bose headphones. Well, everybody thought that you were in a postal. That's what the problem was. All right, all right, Aiden, I got a question for you. So yeah, we, go ahead. we we love the mod music. We the British invasion. Was there yeah. a surf music invasion in the UK? Uh, I'm not. I, I I wouldn't be the right person to ask. I don't know. I mean, I know I like surf music. I know I've got a lot of mates who like surf music. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not sure if there was an invasion as such. I, yeah, I, I genuinely would not. Had their, their revi not revival, but the Beach Boys had a huge, huge. huge oh yeah, I, yeah. I mean, the Beach Boys were very, very big. Yeah. yeah, the, yeah. The Keith Moon and arguably America's only answer to the Beatles at the time. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Yeah. Let's get real. No, they no, no. Let's let's get, get the let's get real. The Beatles were England's answer oh, to the okay. Beach Boys. All right, all right. Yeah, the oh. Beach Boys came first, didn't they? No, they came first. That's a fair statement. Well, no, no, no. The, the Beach Boys, they they gave the nightmares to the Beatles. Right. At, well, that, at, at and that time. was the whole thing. That's when the Beatles realized they had to be clean cut. You could not be the rock and roller in Hamburg in your leather and your and your pompadour hair. You needed to have a nice wasn't clean it, suit. Wasn't just... it McCartney that said when he listened to Pet Sounds, it scared the hell out of him? Yeah, yeah. He thought the Beatles <laughs> were over it's the Kings. But the clean cut, I think the clean cut was Brian Epstein. Brian choice. Epstein, yeah. yeah. Look, it, it takes that manager, that guru who, who who realizes the plan. Now, here's the other part of it. The 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 the, the, the other part is is for the artist artists. is is for the artist to actually listen to the management team <laughs> that, right. that 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 has an idea. Right. And, and and you know what? There's this other thing like. There's there's friends who play in bands and and suggest certain things like inner ear 
uh, ear, you know, just what a dumb, ridiculous ear idea. Monitors? Why would you want to hear yourself on yeah, stage? Ear monitors. Why, that... why would you want to get the thing that Eric's currently wearing that helps him hear what he's saying and doing? No, yeah. What a um, dumb, idiotic idea that must I mean, be. But you know what? You know what? So my brother couldn't stand in ear monitors because he couldn't hear his amp anymore. Like, I can't hear my I amp. I played Corey. That's not going to be a problem. Right. Corey's gonna, <laughs> Corey's <gonna be> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're not going to worry about that part. Corey's going to hear his amp. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Listen, it, it, I'm not it, allowed to give finger gestures because that's a visual uh, thing. Uh, it's not a bad thing. Uh, it's just you play a good volume. You play a healthy volume. A healthy <laughs> volume. volume. There you go. A healthy. It'd be one thing if you volume. weren't good at guitar and you played loud. I'm right. gonna go and with that. With like, just like Eric, that I like a healthy. I like that term, healthy volume. It's a healthy volume. Healthy healthy volume. Everyone can definitely hear you. That's for sure. <laughs> if you're hearing me, that's an issue. <laughs> well, well, so I mean, Aiden, Aiden, what's your favorite? local band in the uk right now oh uh, to be honest i don't actually know many local bands that, um no, because I, i've only lived down here a couple of years and i haven't been someone, able to see some, some, a band that we don't know about any band, I, I, any band, <laughs> any band that you can tell about. everyone about jamie t this is your moment <laughs> jamie t. Oh, i do like a bit of jamie t yeah. um he's scottish isn't he no he's from um oh you know what he might be but he's based out of um i think hampton wick Wick, okay, I fair think, enough. Yeah, oh, someone you wouldn't know about. What about the Claxons? You know them? Golden no. Scans? No. That's a very nice little tune. Oh, I'll give you a recommend on that. Listen to Golden Scans by the Claxons. Golden Scans. By the Claptons. Yeah. The Claptons? Claptons. Like Clax, Clactons. Claptons, like Air Raid Claxon. Yeah. Okay. That sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. Hey, man, this is one of those episodes I don't want to end. We're going to have to do a part two about this. I'm definitely dead. Yeah, so we should have a, a something part about two if you're down with doing well, part. Yeah, I mean, because because well, it's, it's getting the... to be eleven o'clock. So it's, yes, the, the, the eleven o'clock. I'd love to see a, a show about that the yeah, managers. And... Or yeah, four yeah four o'clock <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd like to have a show about the managers, the producers, the stuff behind the band that we don't see. I, I I I, I would appreciate that. that the most. We'll talk about <laughs> McGee for an hour. Yeah. Um, and Colonel, uh, the Colonel, the Colonel Parker, Tom right? Parker. Yeah, Tom Tom the Parker. Man Elvis. Yeah, the man that stole from <laughs> Elvis. Uh, you know, bad managers, the, the 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 Joe Jacksons of the world, and and uh, yeah, and that yeah. stuff. The the Brian Wilson's dad, who was Murray. A, Murray was not a nice man. But and, that and, that's and, for that episode. Here, um, yeah, Aiden. Yes. Plug the social media for the pub, plug your whatever social, social media. media you want. All right. So it's um, facebook.com forward slash uh, Golden Eagle South Sea or Instagram, the Golden Eagle South Sea. Uh, what else have we got? I think that's all we got for now. But my personal one on Ironically Unmodern on Instagram, that's a play on the whole modernist. See what I, I did like there? that. I like <laughs> that. Yeah. Because it's not very modern anymore, let's be honest. But um, yeah, that's my plugs. I think that's it. Well, let's let's go to Cody Bonjour, who we're, has his we're, own we're show we're definitely on gonna have, We definitely want to have you back. This was awesome. Our first cross-continental yeah, outer time zone thing. Thank you so much for joining us. Cody, plug. Yeah, so con Contraband Radio on Thursday nights, typically, or Wednesday nights. Sometimes we're still working it out. Um, yeah, we're, we're fixing some stuff up. But Aiden, I'd love to have you on. Maybe Corey and Craig, Eric, too, everybody on it at some point or another. But uh, I thank you guys for letting me come on here and, you know, work stuff out. And then um, I'll definitely have you on there. But, yeah, CodyBonja.com for, nice. for news. Cody nice. case, if this ever ends. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Paradigm, plug something. Oh, yes. Well, as we were saying earlier at the ah. top of the show, keep your eyes and ears open for something happening with LaSalle Market in the near future. Yes, there, there will be a very uh, secret meeting tomorrow uh, about what might happen very well, soon. Very is there going to be, are they going to keep it above the toilet? Is it one of the old fashioned toilets with the, with the, the, the plug? With the chain? No, Godfather, it is not. Okay, um, not that kind of secret um, meeting. Good. But, but, but I, I want to plug something Good with, Italian, with, with, with the uh, a possibility of a Wednesday show. Be, since we realize that every And this other doesn't year, really apply to you, Aiden, because this is a holiday about how we left your country. Your, your country, yes. Um, uh, was uh, it 4th of July again? No, no not no, that no. one. Oh. <laughs> And that, this, is, this, is the, this is the Pilgrim's oh, life. Thank, thank, thank God we left. 
But um, on, on thanks, generally, we, we've usually had a show that's usually not successful at all. For the sake of the like irony, it. are you going to join us for that show? Um, yeah, I might actually. What day is it? <laughs> So, so the, the night before Thanksgiving, we, we've discussed and, and we talked to a, uh, a music producer, uh, Andrew Sulo, about doing a, a very special show on, on, on a Wednesday before Thanksgiving, realizing... That's, that's, a big band, that's a big band night over here, the it, Wednesday. It every, was. Everybody big... comes... Yeah, it was. Everybody comes home, usually comes home, you haven't seen anybody, and all the bars are packed with everybody who you haven't seen since high school or since last okay. Thanksgiving. And it's a, it's re, it's really nice. It's a really cool thing. And unfortunately, because of the COVID the way, situation, but I, um, I definitely think the night before Thanksgiving, yeah. for the irony's sake, <laughs> I think we are definitely. But 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 I will always remember the the show with the contraband and the dilemma. Oh, on the night before Thanksgiving, this guy books a metal like a death metal band. a death metal band. You know what? In then, between. Cody and Corey. <laughs> we, we, we had something like that once. Um, a death metal band opened for us, and they were proper screamo. And bear in mind, we were playing like um, basically like prog rock. It, it was oh quite gosh. slow stuff. It wasn't so it's not like, just America. It's not just America where we have producers that are morons. <laughs> it was quite chill prog rock. And then, you know, we, we got started off with this band that were literally like, ah. I was like, oh wow, that's a bit. And the problem that. with that, when you have one of those screamo bands, it empties out the entire band, right. so no one stays for it you. Really, did. we played to the bar staff practically. <laughs> <I> mean, <that's, laughs> it wasn't very good. I won't lie. Yeah, no, I. I it, it, Mind it, you, it's a tiny venue anyway. We, we we have that other bar that we had a good night that night, but the famous thing with um, uh, what was it? Black Sabbath and the Captain and Tennille. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Black Sabbath opened for Captain and Sunil at um this bar that Corey, well, not even a bar, it's a music hall that Corey and I played at, which was also allegedly the first place the Beatles played in America. It was but a warm-up show, but, but we have no way to confirm that. Because the place closed, too. Which is and nice. there's a lot of rumors that everybody What's from Frank the, Sinatra to, to, to the Beatles played there. Well, like there's all in an eight-hour show piece. there. Yeah. Yeah, I was just happy I got to play bass on the same stage as Sting and Paul McCartney. Which was yeah. Cool. yeah, I had a similar thing actually. Me, um, it wasn't quite such a massive gig, but we hired out the Guild Hall near where we are. Um, and it's not like a massive venue or anything. We we just did it for an album launch, but it has been used for some very big bands in the past because it's the biggest stage in Portsmouth. Yeah. Um, so it was the same ba- um stage that uh, I think David Bowie was on there, Rolling Stones. Uh, I know the Jam was on there at one point. There's quite a lot because they actually had a whole mod exhibition down there. Oh, yeah. Um, that I went to a couple of years ago. It was really good, actually. But yeah. Um, Corey, last but not least, plug whatever you want that maybe I didn't plug or. Um, what do I want to well, plug? Well, Corey's thinking for all the sports fans out there, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like the New York Jets and New England Patriots will be going into overtime, if you can imagine <laughs> that. At 27, oh, my God. But- 27. Either of them actually scored? Apparently. A lot of scores. It, but the, look at them. Look the, at the, that. But the Jets might break their winless streak and lose the first Our football. Back. I apologize. American football. Yeah. American I'll, football. Say something, I'll say something about real sport. Um, we had our longest. Oh, six- oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> we had our longest Six Nations match in the entire history of the tournament. Um, it finished last week because we started it. Back in March, we ran into lockdown oh, geez. last <laughs> week. So it's the longest Six Nations ever, which we won. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. All right, yeah, Corey, so my, my, fi- my, fi- my final plugs. Or um, thought, at least, if so, you do have one. I think, so looking back, the Mods and the Rockers, This, these are groups that always had a, they had, they had their visions of the future, and these are people, these were youths who absolutely saw that they had something to say they had something to express and i think now more than ever is a time that we need to use our voices we need to you know let a, let our yayas out in a way that really just you know yes yeah, yeah, yeah like the rolling stones album get the live album get your yayas out uh, but yeah no we need to you know the, the world the world seems stressed out there's illness about but know what we can get through. We've gone through this. We've done this, and that's that's the spirit of this stuff is just just keep freaking surviving. And yeah, um, so yeah, I want to thank Aiden. Thank you for joining us. Get some sleep. Thank you very much for having me. Um, uh, Eric, thank you as always for joining us. 
See you tomorrow Thank at 4 o'clock. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow at 4 o'clock. <laughs> For the Our secret time. meeting at LaSalle Market. <laughs> Colin's the secret meeting, 4 o'clock tomorrow at LaSalle Eric, Market. Is that, is that Paul Weller on the right there? That absolutely is. <laughs> Eric, put it back on. Well, let's yeah, get, wait, wait. There it is. Eric, say something loud so it picks you hello, up. Hello, 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 hello. There it is. Oh, there you go. Nice. Yeah, one of my heroes. <laughs> All right. um, anyway, thank you very much for having me, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you for another wonderful episode. We will have, we will see you guys next Monday, and we might look a little different. Thank you so much. <laughs> have a good night. Don't be a dick. <laughs> Unless you're magic. But still, then. <laughs>